Thank you for joining us on a brand new episode of Motorheads. Today we have with us a guest who has now been a relative newcomer to India but has had some time to settle in. It's five months in for Kevin Flynn who heads the business for Fiat Chrysler in India. Thank you for joining us. It's good to meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet you at last. Thank and you. Yeah, and, and it's been something that I'd been wanting to do ever since we heard of the appointment. So I'm glad that this has worked out today. And uh, and and a little late, but let me still say welcome to India. Well, <laughs> thank you very much indeed. I mean, to be honest with you, I think I needed some time to uh, get into the country, get sure. into the business, get into the market. For me, it's totally new. I'm new to uh, FCA. Yeah. I'm new to India and the continent and all the challenges that that offers. But so, so five months in, I'm sort of ready. And what a perfect opportunity for us to meet on the Abarth launch and here at BIC, which is just a dream come true to come to a circuit like this. It is It is a special place. And uh, the Burdhan International Circuit, of course, is where we are, as, as Kevin said. Uh, Abarth as a brand is something that, of course, we will talk about today. Yeah. Uh, but going back to what you said about, you know, getting a grip on things and just sort of settling down and, and figuring out the extent of the business. Sure. Um, it's been interesting for you in a sense because it's not just about the Indian market, it's also about figuring out the overall global strategy for Fiat Chrysler, uh, which has been evolving the last few years. Now, there's been enough said about missed opportunities in India for <laughs> Fiat, but, uh, but what's, what's the, what was the hook for you to say, yes, I want to take this job? Look, it's a challenge, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, and it's a big and one. And I suppose, in a funny kind of a way, a lot of the jobs that I've done in my career have been uh, an underdog. And, and I loved that, you know, um, uh, one of the previous jobs was selling and, uh, and setting up uh, Lexus in Germany, you know, so it's, it's that kind of that challenge that easy. I like. <laughs> this had huge appeal because yeah. clearly two global giants that have come together as one organisation and the qualities that can be offered from, uh, from both to bring in, you know, with platform sharing, with technology sharing, the, the whole move globally to smaller engines. So these two companies have so much to offer each other. So I think timing was good. Secondly, um, uh, Fiat has such a uh, history here. You know, everybody has great stories of, 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 of resonance of their families. Oh, we had a Fiat, da 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 da, da. And, and that's just slightly gone off. There's still the passionate aficionados of, of Fiat in the country, and that's brilliant. I mean, the, the uh, owners clubs alone, I've been reading the forums, and, and in fact, we've invited some of them here later on today, and I'm going to meet them. Um, so, you know, clearly there is a latent passion for Fiat, but we just need to get the business model right. We just need all the investment that has gone in here is massive. Yeah. It is significant. And the quest for me is to actually take a good look at where we are, where do we want to be, and what's the journey to get there? Because the commitment on a global basis to success in India mm. is phenomenal. The, the point you made though about this, you know, having the right kind of attention from global management as well. Yes. Um, the, the reason why I think there was, a, there was a period in between where people thought that ha that had disappeared is not just because of the performance of the brand in India, but also perhaps because of the changes that were taking place globally. Uh, how, how important does India become given that there are so many other things that Fiat is also trying to fix and get right? Oh, look, I think it's critically important and I think if we look at the role of India hmm. uh, for the motor industry, I think that role is changing yeah. and so it's a good time a good time for us because we've made these investments, we've got this magnificent plant, I don't know if you've been there, I have. most magnificent plant in Rajan <laughs> yeah. and uh, I mean that place is world class and I'll tell you what I love, I love the passion of the people that are working there, they love what they're doing, they're building fantastic cars. So. You know, the opportunity is, is, is there for us. And as I said, the, the, the role of India, I think, is changing. A lot of car companies came to India because they believe this is the next one that's going to explode. You know, it's going to go to next five. China, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the next one. This is going to be yeah. a five million car market, but it bubbles along yeah. at 2.2 and, um, you know, around about two million a year. And, and, and we're working with it. So there's a lot of infrastructure here. So what it's now becoming is almost a global hub. And if you look at the evolution of the industry, companies are becoming far more global yeah. to protect themselves against currencies, to have a far better logistic situation for building the right cars in the right places for global consumption. So we're in that process. We're looking, we're looking at, hang on, what do we want to do for India? What is, what are the, what's the model line that we need for the future going forward? And how can that also serve some of our other right-hand drive markets? But the commitment that you talk about, is that something that for you personally, is that something that you were almost like 
All right, let me know that all this is in place before I sign on because no, that is crucial in a sense. Isn't yeah, it? it is. But I think um, I think you've, you've, you've <laughs> you, know, you know why I ask this. I mean, you, like you said, there is such a massive amount that's been done here already from an infrastructure or a business point of view, uh, but obviously the volumes haven't taken off. So you need to say that. All right, are you going to use this as an export hub at some point, or are you not? Well, I think that that's what we're evaluating now. And um, as you know, uh, we're going to be bringing the Jeep brand also to yes. India. We've confirmed that now. And we've just confirmed that we're going to be investing uh, a further uh, $280 million in the plant in Ranjangaon to build a Jeep here. Mm. I mean, to build a Jeep here, which is going to be exported. I mean, that is great news. So um, a lot of, <laughs> lot of those things were bubbling and we were discussing them uh, when we were going through the possibility of this appointment. Mm. So, but nothing was all in, in stone. And, and the beauty of the challenge here is to, say, is to come in, see what we've got and find the Create, right route for. Because yeah. we, deserve, we deserve a rightful place in the Indian uh, uh, car industry. We deserve it. We, you know, we've got great heritage. We, we've got an Italian flair. Um, and that can be different from the other offerings. And, and good cars. And yeah. Good cars. <laughs> yeah, and good cars that handle to, very, very yeah. nicely as well. I mean, that's, the, that's been almost, um, it, it used to be criticism, I guess, from the motoring press for a while. Then it became almost frustration because all of us saw that. We saw that the cars, it wasn't the cars. It was always just not getting the strategy right. I think you're right. I mean, one of the first things I did, because I'm, I'm also new to the segment. You know, I've, I've, a lot of my career has been in, uh, in, in, in the yeah. premium end of the, of the business. And of course, what people see as premium in India is different. You know, yeah. what I see as premium is luxury. Whereas, whereas you know, our cars are con con considered premium. So what I had to do when I first came was, was to really understand the, the market segments that I was looking at and the kind of products and so forth. So I briefed the, the product team to assemble at Ranjan Gaon an array of the competitors' products and our products. And I got the engineers from our Chennai operation, and I got some guys from the factory, and I got my technical team, mm -hmm. and I got my, uh, some guys from marketing. Uh, and we all got together, and we just drove them. We set up a small route around the factory, and we drove every car. Mm -hmm. So I got in and out, opened the boot, sat in the back, to find out what is it that makes a certain car suddenly take off in the Indian market, mm -hmm. and others uh, uh, lose their shine. And I was coming at it from a completely different angle. And I'm looking at our cars and I'm driving our cars. And I'm saying, I like the feel of the chassis. I like the way the car handles. I like the way the engine pulls. And I'm getting other products that actually are selling probably great, a lot greater volumes than us. And I'm saying, I'm, don't not, do that. <laughs> I'm not getting the vibe. Yeah. So it's one thing having a, a set of products that deliver that real dynamic enjoyment. Okay. Uh, but actually... Is that what the consumer is looking for? Yeah. And we've got to find that balance, I think, moving forward of, of actually making sure that we've got products that actually appeal uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to the buyers in the marketplace. And actually then we as a brand have just got to inspire more confidence. And, and you know, the one that comes up to me a lot of times, oh, is Fiat staying, is Fiat staying. Just look at the investment. <laughs> I mean, we've got one of the biggest engineering you centers in Chennai. Can't here. not stay, right? <laughs> we can't not stay. It's a, it's a commit, an abs absolute commitment. Well, in that future. sense, I think the fact that it became Fiat Chrysler globally plays into that idea. It, it kind of helps us because yeah, it, it gives you a different kind of an opportunity and a different kind of scale, perhaps in the yeah, future. Yeah, it does. Yeah, definitely. So we've talked for a while. I mean, yeah. we've got these cars here, and we've got to quickly talk about a bath before. Uh, I'm itching to jump into one, as you can probably guess. Uh, the strategy behind bringing Abarth, obviously this is a limited volume brand globally, it's not yeah, just sure. about India. Um, and, and like you said, the Indian market has its own peculiarities. How do you see this fitting in? Well, look, first of all, I think uh, the decision, the decision was made a yeah. little while ago, yeah. and then it sort of got a little bit derailed and, and the uh, timing wasn't. So when I arrived, we sort of first of all dusted off the uh, strategies and <laughs> said, hang on, let's have a look at these and how can we, how can we make this great fun, dynamic pocket rocket <laughs> do a job for us. And I mean, look, this car design is iconic to Fiat, isn't oh, it? Yeah. It says everything oh, yeah. about the heritage. It really it's talks to the brand. E exactly. And, and you know, if you look at the, um, the, the, the car buyer in, in India, they're looking in this segment, not this segment, if you took the, the Fiat 500, which we previously uh, imported, you know, that actually, again, was a niche 
um, um, fun car to own. You know, it didn't necessarily tick all the boxes in terms of uh, the packaging sure. and everything else because it's, that's not what it is. It's not meant to be that. So we've got this chance again to come with this iconic shape which says a lot about Fiat but in a completely different package. What it does for us is more than that. It, this heralds the arrival of uh, a bath in uh, India but what we've also done and you'll be hearing more of it shortly is actually we've developed with a bath uh, engineers a uh, Punto bar for India which yeah. is going to be built here and in fact you, you'll probably see one uh, we've got a couple here that we brought along for, for you guys That's to have a look at. Yeah. Yes, so, and it's, it's not quite finished but it, it, it'll be with us this year and, and, and that packs 145 horsepower. Oh, that's going to be fun. So it's <laughs> first India hot hatch. So we've got a family and there's other, other activities as well around uh, using the uh, a bath engineering, a bath power units across our range. So we can bring uh, a performance flair for the consumer that's looking for that and it adds another dimension. Well, like you said, I mean, it, it was announced a while ago, so I'm glad that we now have the cars here. Yes. Uh, and, and congrats to you. But uh, like I was saying earlier as well, um, you know, the cars are here. I, I can't keep talking to you. I, I, I You're going to drive little, one? Yeah, I have this little draw that's taking me close <laughs> to it now. And you said it's like a mini Ferrari. It's red. It, it, you know, it's you got everything going for, for it. You could so, you? So, better go and have some fun. Well, we got plenty more to talk about in terms of also, you know, the, the rest of the strategy from, from sure. Fiat, etc. But maybe we should just... Do you want to join me? We can go, love and, to. go and get a quick spin That's in. That's fantastic.